I know there may be some of you that, you know, are like, okay, we went through this little bit of a deck design. We designed the joist. We designed the beam. He talked about cantilevering. What is cantilevering and how does that work? I want to just touch on it and make sure I clarify it so that you guys have a clear understanding if you design your deck with any type of cantilever in it, how to come up with it, with the requirement, and what it is that I'm talking about. So let's look at my little drawing here real fast. I kind of cleaned it up um, so it can be better uh, better read. Um, but we talked about how we were going to cantilever the beam right here. So we have two 2x12s two and we're going to cantilever at least 6 inches on each side. And then we're actually going to cantilever the joists over the top. We're going to go over this beam by a couple feet. It's like, well, how do I know how much I can cantilever? And what's that kind of look like from the side? So let me, let me dive into that just a little bit and help clarify so that when you're doing your design, um, you have an idea what it is that I'm talking about. So let's talk about beam cantilever first. So we're talking about the beam, right? The thing that sits on top of the posts that your joists would either connect directly to or go over the top of. Here we have a beam. Okay, we're looking at the deck face on and we have these posts right here. We have the beam and then we have the joists going over the top. Okay, but the beam is actually cantilevering over the end posts by a little bit, right? Just like we have to go six inches minimum on our design, I have to go six inches over those outside posts. Now here again is a front facing look where the joists actually butt to the beam. Okay, they're not going over the top, but the beam itself is cantilevering over the top and past those outside posts. Well, how far can you go? Well, if you go down here, the very bottom, it says beam cantilevers are limited to the adjacent beam's span divided by four. The adjacent beam span divided by four, right? So one fourth, okay? So beam span, beam span, and then your cantilever. So from here, you're going this way, you divide that by four, right? So for myself, if this is my beam span right here, and I can go a max of one quarter of that, right? I can go divided by four, I can go one quarter. So if this is on our design is eight feet, right? From center post to the outside is eight. So eight divided by four is two feet. So technically you could probably cantilever that two feet if you wanted to, right? That would be kind of the max that you would cantilever that. Eight divided by four is two. And so two feet would be our max, one quarter, okay? So that kind of gives you an idea on beam cantilevers, okay? And um, and now let's look at the joists, right? Because the joists, if we're looking at this detail, right, where the joists go over the top, well, that can only cantilever so far as well. This would be like the deck that we're talking about, okay? We have our um, we have our beam that has cantilever six inches but it's notched into our six by six and then the joists carry over the top. Optional cantilever, right? If you had a freestanding deck, maybe you cantilever on both sides, okay? This actually gives us a maximum cantilever. You don't have to do any calculations for it. We had decided we were gonna go with Doug Fur. We were gonna go with two by eights at 16 inches on center for a max span of 11 foot one. But then if you scroll over to here, it says maximum cantilever spacing of deck joist with cantilevers. So we have 16. And if we follow our two by eight line all the way over, it's telling us that we can cantilever two foot one. I don't know if I did well enough explaining that on the last video. So I want to make sure to clarify it. Um, how I came up with the fact I could move back a couple feet because we had a 13 foot deck and we moved it back two feet to make sure that we were at 11 feet, which was the max span allowed by those two by eights, but it also gave us two feet of cantilever. And then if you take into account the actual bearing point with a six by six is five and a half inches. So at some point in there, you're gonna be less on your cantilever or even less on your span, right? Because your bearing point is where you start to bear on each end. Um, not to confuse you, but if you're 11 or if you're 13 feet and you take five and a half inches out of that, well, you're actually like 12 foot six, right? 
You can go 11 foot and up to two feet. So you know you're covered as long as you set your, your beam and your posts in the right spot. Hopefully that clarifies cantilever on what it is that I'm talking about and um, you know, just helps you when you're doing your design.